It's the Mitch Walker Show. One solid hour of racing and nothing but racing. Direct from the drivers, track owners, promoters, and team members. Interesting topics and compelling guests with a touch of attitude. And now the guy with the best mustache east of the Mississippi, Mitch the Dr. Walker. Hey, it is the Mitch Walker Show. Live and direct on a Monday night. Man, I tell you what, we're revved up, ready to go. Got a great show lined up for you. Got a young man, Joel Rayburn, non-wing sprint car driver, who's getting ready to have his 18th birthday coming up. He's going to be joining us here in just a little bit. And then a little bit later on, my buddy from the left coast, Mr. Chuck Becker, is going to sit in, and we're going to deal with the ultimate question for racers. But I tell you what, before we get too deep into the show, let's roll it around here and do our national, our Pledge of Allegiance like we do each and every week. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, you know, some people might not, but when, when I hear kids recite that at school, that, that really strikes a chord with me because I always think back to that thing with Red Skelton. And if you've never heard that, how he, how he breaks down the, the Pledge of Allegiance, you need to go listen to it. Uh, it's pretty cool. We're going to cover some stuff that happened up at Brainerd Motorsports Park this past weekend. And we're going to cover some stuff that... Uh, some results we got we got a few results we're going to sprinkle in there as well we're going to get joel rayburn on here uh, we're going to talk about the tyler herb bobby pierce thing we're going to talk a little bit about bubba wallace we're going to talk a little bit about uh old men and race cars uh, man i'm telling you we have got a ton of stuff that we're going to be talking about on tonight's show and one thing i do want to uh i want to get in there real quick i want to thank uh, Mimi and Adam over at A to Z Media Blasting in Chattanooga for uh, the really kind words that they put on social media about me today and uh, about my announcing at Brainerd. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool when you get recognized for uh, some good hard work. But, uh, man, I'm telling you, it's it's a lot of fun. It's different, but I'm running with it, and I'm going to – I'm going to keep learning. We're going to keep rocking and rolling and we'll get it in there and we'll have a good time with it. Now I do know that, uh, there are a lot of people in this area, not particularly racers themselves, but racers whose family members have passed away in the past 10 to 12 days. Um, for those of you that do, Please keep all those those family members in your prayers as, as they deal with these traumatic losses. And just keep in mind, you know, you're never promised tomorrow. So grab your loved ones, give them a big hug, and, and tell them that you love them. And if you would, please keep my, my old producer, Mr. Jacob Seelman, in your prayers. Uh, good Lord knows the need and we won't go into that, but, uh, just keep Jacob in your prayers. He, uh, he could use a few as we all could, but some of us more than others. And Jacob really, really could use some right now. Great guy and, uh, passionate about racing, passionate about announcing and him and I like to sit around and spitball ideas, but. We've got a great show for, lined up for you tonight. I'm excited about it. Can't wait to get uh, Joel in here and talk a little sprint car racing, non-wing kind, and not no crate sprint cars either. We're talking 410 sprinters, no wings, just like race cars are supposed to be. Uh, everybody talks about the World of Outlaws and all the wings and the boards on them. Wings belong on airplanes. Sprint cars don't get wings. And, uh, I'm excited to get this young man in here, and we'll be talking to him in just a few minutes. So with that in mind, uh, call all your friends. Tell them to tune in because this is going to be a one bang-up show. 
got a lot of stuff to cover and we're going to roll through it one step at a time, one lap at a time until they drop the checkered here in about two hours. So don't go nowhere. Sit tight. Get you something cold to drink. And we'll get ready to rumble. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor. And you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Hey, this is PMN's Bob Steele. And if you're planning on attending the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour event at the end of the month at Pit Race, then you're going to need a place to stay. Now, if you're looking for a motel close to the track, I'd highly recommend PMN's official motel partner, the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Enjoy their free continental breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and on-site fitness center. Plus, their spacious suites offer the added comfort of a sitting area for those last-minute team strategy meetings. For reservations, you can click on the link on the PMN website, call them at 724-581-5273, or book them directly through the WyndhamHotels.com website. That's the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, 724-581-5273. Featuring special discounted rates for race-bound SCCA members. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444, Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. It's the Mitch Walker Show. If you need a lot of BS and fluff, go watch NASCAR on Fox. Um, oh, wait a minute. That's Fox Sports 1, something you probably don't get with your basic cable. Now back to the doctor. Welcome back. I am, like I said before the break, I am excited about this. Joining me right now, 2018 USAC CRA Sprint Car Rookie of the Year, Mr. Joel Rayburn. Rick, Joel, how you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing all right. You know, you, you can't complain, and uh, if you did it, don't fix nothing, so it don't do no good. That's right. you got to concentrate your energies on something positive and something that you can change, right? Yes, sir. You know, like uh, racing, we focus our energy on that and uh, see if we can't get back to it. Well, I'll tell you what. I know you being out there in West Covina, uh, in California, the the racing is pretty much pretty much a dead issue out there, isn't it? Yeah, uh, they just ran uh, this past Saturday a, a USAC West Coast 360 event uh, with cut purses because of the lack of fans uh, doing that. They can't have fans in the stands, and uh, they've been running a couple wing races. I know NARC ran some races and KWS ran some races, but uh, other than that, and there's no 410 non-wing, sadly. So uh, we just keep waiting and waiting to see a schedule or see a race come out that uh, we can hopefully go to. Well, you know, you talk about uh, reduced purses because of no fans in the stands. You know, we were here in the southeast. We were locked down for, oh, probably five or six weeks. And we finally got permission to run a race. And we didn't have no fans in the stands. And as an announcer, to walk up into the booth and look out at the grandstands where you normally see seven, eight hundred thousand people and see nobody there, it's hard to get motivated to to announce a race. But we done one for Dirt on Dirt, which was was kind of different. We had a lot of fans, but they were all electronic fans. But it's it's a whole lot different trying to trying to do it from a race car though, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I uh watched the first race back at Knoxville with the World of Outlaws and and I thought it was a bit odd. I believe David Gravel won, but uh I thought it was a bit odd. Uh, they were doing a cage stand and not sure 
how he feels at that point looking at empty grandstands. It's definitely a disappointment. You know, usually uh, Knoxville with the World of Outlaws is an iconic show, uh, being that the the Knoxville Nationals and uh, just World of Outlaws at that track, there's something about it that uh, people love, and it's sad to see no fans in the stands uh, while they're racing there. Well, now, I, I, I want to shift gears because – as as I was doing my research on you, I found out you and my son uh, went through something very similar. You were both supposed to graduate this year, wasn't you? Uh, yeah, I actually graduated in uh, April, uh, just shy of the end of April, maybe the 28th or 29th. And uh, not much changed for me when this came on because uh, I was already in homeschooling, so I already had my work when they shut everything down, so I just kept doing the work, plugging along and and getting it done. And then uh, come April, like I said, 28th or 29th, uh, that was it. Teacher said, uh, good job, and, you know, high school's completed. So uh, it's a nice thing to get off your back, and uh, glad I could still finish it with all the uh, with all the virus and whatnot going on around our uh, country right now. Well, you know, there was a, there was a lot of kids here that, that... – went through oh a lot of i guess you could say i won't say drama but it was uh, a lot of heartaches a lot of headaches they didn't get to really live their last year as a senior as they really wanted to but now from your standpoint you had something to occupy your time didn't you yeah absolutely you know uh, occupying my time this year was a uh, little bit more fulfilled because of uh, great partnerships uh, we created uh, one with Joe Devin at DRC Chassis uh, out of Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, got a 2020 DRC chassis along with a 2018 uh, used DRC chassis this year. So uh, had my hands tied building those. Um, nothing to complain about. You know, anytime working on a race car is fun, but uh, working on a race car that uh, you're driving yourself is is uh, even better. And to create a uh, partnership with someone like uh, Joe Devin is a, a really big thing in uh, my career that I'm trying to build here. Now, I, I got to ask you this. I know um, a lot of your racetracks out there will have um, like a, I don't know what you have, past champions night or a, a nostalgia night where they bring out a lot of the old sprint cars. You've been to some of these, right? Yes, sir. I think I ran the past two um, out at Paris Auto Speedway. I know they call it the Hall of Fame Classic, and uh, they bring these yeah, cool yeah. old midgets and sprint cars, and uh, they take a couple laps around Paris, and to see them go is really cool, as, uh, especially when you're racing the same night and see what it's come to after uh, you know, 50, 70 years of now, technology the- development and see what we're running now compared to uh, watching those guys take those beautiful race cars around those tracks. Do you do you ever just sit back and marvel at, at what these guys done with the race cars back then compared to to the equipment that you have today? Yeah, you know it is amazing. Uh, you know we've gone from through shaft shocks, or I guess they started. I'm not sure if they started with no suspension, but you know I I know they started with the torch bars and they had the through shaft shocks where the shock shaft goes to the top and. Uh, you know, what are the biggest development that I've seen um, is obviously an engine. Um, I'm only 17 years old, so I've not been around to see them too much. But doing the research, you know, to see the engines are a big thing, but uh, the shocks have really come a long way for sure. Uh, even from when I started racing uh, a sprint car in, in Young Guns for Tommy Dunkel and Dunkel Motorsports in 2017 at Paris, um, you know, even from that time, to drive in the Joel Rayborn race and Jim Blake's race and sprint car now is amazing. You know, in the three years, what they've created and uh, what they continue to develop. I know uh, shock companies like CSI and advanced racing suspensions are working on new pistons and uh, whatnot for their shocks. And they're getting better because uh, people are winning with them. Now, have, have you ever looked at some of those old cars from back in the sixties and seventies and go, man, I'd like to try one of those one time. You know, someone said that uh, I should go up and ask one of them to take a couple laps on a Hall of Fame night. And, uh, I don't know if I could do it because I'd want to go too fast and uh, might hurt myself trying to do that. Well, you know, we had uh, last year we had Jimmy Oski on, 
and we were talking with Oski and I asked him if, if I said, you know, you look at these guys today and, and the job that they're doing, the cars that they're driving. Have you ever wanted to get in one and, and just go out and take a few laps? And he said, well, I, I've, I've rode around in one a time or two. I said, but if, I mean, have you ever really wanted to just matter down and get after it? And he sat there and he said, well, you know, he said, I think about it. He said, I think about it for about three minutes. He said, and then I'm just glad to sit back and watch. So, you know, it's, it's a different era. It's a different time. I know the changes it, it takes to adapt from one car to another. I know in dirt light models, uh, the, the technology has just come so far. We had a couple of cars sitting over at the Georgia Racing Museum in Dawsonville where Bill Elliott's from and Chase Elliott. And we had a car from the late seventies and we had a new car from 2012 sitting over there and had them sitting side by side. And if you look at them from across the room, they looked identical. But if you walked up and started looking at them, you could really start to see a lot of the differences and see where weight was saved here and weight was saved there and things that were done a little differently in the way the cars were put together. Does, does that part of, of racing, does that, does that really get, get to you? I mean, does, is that something that you're interested in watching the technology as it grows? Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing what they've uh, created, like I said, uh, with the shocks and, and going from the engines they ran to making uh, just shy of a thousand. And, um, you know, I, I think it's cool that's changing them. Um, you know, what we have now, sprint cars are amazing, and they're uh, sure fun to rip around these joints and uh, go out there and have a blast and do some battle. But, uh, you know, it, it, it is cool. I like seeing the older cars, and um, I'm a big fan of the Silver Crown cars. And, you know, they just – they look some of them look a little older. Uh, they're new chassis, but, you know, I love watching Silver Crown racing, especially the one last night at uh, Ceilings Grove in Pennsylvania. That was a great race. And uh, so I like seeing the change and following. Uh, I like to follow exactly what everyone's doing. You know, Tanner Thorson's trying four coals on his uh, spike midget there in the National Midget Series. And uh, I like to see what everyone's doing. And uh, everyone comes up with their own own theories and, and try them. And some work out and some don't. So, But, uh, you know, there's always something to try. Uh, you know, there's no limit and there'll never be, uh, the best equipment you can have because there's always something to move forward to and, uh, develop better. Well, now I know kind of shifting gears here a little bit. I know you've got a special day coming up here in a day or two, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, August 13th will be my birthday, uh, here. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, cool i guess i've uh, made it through another year but uh you know i just want to mainly get back racing and and uh you know try and find a couple of marketing partners and and maybe a few small sponsors to get me back to indiana there to uh, uh keep chasing dream and and uh try and become a national sprint car driver and uh just need to get back there start running some races uh you know you you run with the best so you can learn from the best and then you become the best. So, you know, you need to get back there and run with those guys. And so just trying to do that more and more every day, just, uh, you know, sending proposal after proposal. And uh, I probably sent 1,500 of them. And, you know, you, you just keep trying and until that one hits. Oh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, Joel, we're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I want to shift gears and, and talk a little bit more, not so much about racing, but about Joel and uh, find out a little bit more about you and what you got going on and some of the things you like to do. So, so sit tight. We're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. You cool to hang out with us? Yes, sir. All right, great. All right, everyone, sit tight. We'll be right back in just a minute. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor and my very special guest, Mr. Joel Raven. And you'll find us exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. 
You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. Be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, whatever. We are your source for motorsports. Performance Motorsports Network. Hey, this is PMN's Bob Steele, and if you're planning on attending the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour event at the end of the month at Pit Race, then you're going to need a place to stay. Now, if you're looking for a motel close to the track, I'd highly recommend PMN's official motel partner, the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Enjoy their free continental breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and on-site fitness center. Plus, their spacious suites offer the added comfort of a sitting area for those last-minute team strategy meetings. For reservations, you can click on the link on the PMN website, call them at 724-581-5273, or book them directly through the WyndhamHotels.com website. That's the Microtel Inn & Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, 724-581-5273. Featuring special discounted rates for race-bound SCCA members. If you're a racer and you've not yet heard of Raceworks Incorporated in Berlin, Connecticut, you'll be hearing about them soon. Raceworks is Connecticut's official LFR and Troyer repair shop and fabricator for all your modified chassis needs. Raceworks Incorporated is your one-stop race shop covering all of your modified needs. From a complete roller to fabrication of new body panels for that beginning of year update or for an after-race weekend repair, Raceworks Incorporated has you covered. Raceworks Incorporated, also specializing in prep, chassis setup, shock testing, and interior fabrication. Raceworks Incorporated is proudly owned and operated by New England Antique Racers Association inductee Ed Flemke. That's Raceworks Incorporated, located in Berlin, Connecticut. Give them a call at 860-829-1312. That's 860-829-1312. Raceworks Incorporated. Tell all your racing friends. Covering the entire field from the back markers to the front runners, the teams, the owners, and the promoters. It's the Mitch Walker Show. Now back to Mitch, the Dr. Walker. All right, welcome back. Sitting in the Wednesday night from out on the left coast. Both my guests are from the left coast tonight. Hmm, that must mean something. Mr. Joel Rayburn, young man, runs the 410 non-wing sprint cars. And as I said before, sprint cars are not supposed to have wings. So, um, but Joel, now what got you What got you into non-wing sprint cars? Oh, well, it's a uh, quite a fun and uh, honoring and long journey uh, coming up to uh, racing in 2020, uh, 14, 410 non-wing sprint cars. And, uh, I started racing quarter midgets when I was four and a half, um, ran up until, uh, until I was about 11 and I ran quarter midgets and Dave Lewis from USAC racing gave me an opportunity to run their house car, uh, their Ford focus midget in the, uh, HPD midget series that they uh, had there for a little while and, uh, got started there and, uh, ran, uh, 2015 ran the Ventura Racing Association uh, schedule for the Ford Focus Midgets. I ran Ron Blondell's car, the All American Motorsports Foundation, and uh, from there on out, I uh, got a in 2016 ran the USAC HVD Western Midget Series uh, again, and uh, this time with Impab Corporation on the board, and uh, completed that season and. And was very fortunate enough to meet uh, Tommy Dunkel with Dunkel Motorsports. And we uh, hit it off, you know, helped, helped him at the racetrack while he was running his 360 sprint car. And and we met up for lunch one day, and, and he gave me the opportunity and uh, laid it on the table for me to drive his 360 sprint car uh, in the Young Gun Series around Paris. And the second to the last race, the engine blew up, and... Uh, We'd already known Toby Sampson, uh, you know, got to thank Toby. He's he's probably one of the reasons why I'm racing sprint cars. And uh, Tommy Dunkel, for sure, he's he uh, probably is the reason that I'm racing sprint cars. Uh, Give me the opportunity at 14 years old uh, to run a 360 non-wing sprint car was uh, pretty fortunate. And uh, when the engine blew up, Jim Blakesley let me run his uh, car and engine 
that was previously owned by Don Blair. And when Don passed, he gave his racing equipment to Jim Blakesley, and uh, he let me run it. And in the 2018 season, he said, uh, go ahead and run it. Otherwise, I'll take it to my house, and it'll become a flower pot. So we ran it, and uh, flew the Don Blair colors flat, proud, and uh, finished off 2018 season in the USAC Area uh, Rookie of the Year. And in 2019, I uh, called Jim in the off season, and, and he said, go ahead, keep running it. And... Uh, he says, run it until you're out of everything. He's He's got parts here, there, and, uh, you know, he's he comes over. We rebuild the engines in the garage. There's, uh, you know, we can't afford the uh, rebuild the engine shop. So do it ourselves, and he comes over, and uh, we have good old time. And and here we are in 2020, uh, still running Jim Blake's Racing Power Plant in both the 2020 and uh, 2018 DRC chassis, and, and uh, that's what got me here. And uh, the main, you know, the main people would be my dad. I wouldn't be anywhere without him for sure. But uh, Tommy Dunkel getting me started in racing. And uh, my grandma and grandpa have been a huge help throughout my racing. And um, Jim Blakesley and Toby Sampson, those uh, those people are why I'm racing today, uh, along with many great sponsors. Well, now, i, I got to ask you this. I've asked a lot of my guests the same question. You said that your dad helps you a lot. Do you feel that that racing has strengthened the bond between you and your dad? Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, in 2010, my uh, uh, my mom left. So it's been uh, him and I for uh, probably 10 or 11 years now, and uh, so you know, I mean, we've always been together, and and you know, it is a bit of a bonding. It's I mean, we do, you know, whatever we, whatever we do, we do together. It's just us two. And, uh, you know, racing is, it can push you further apart at times, but, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you love each other and you do, and you're doing something together and, uh, staying out of trouble. So, uh, just doing the one drug that no one can get off of and that's racing. Oh yeah. That, that's, that's a, that's an, that's an addiction that, uh, it's really hard to shake, you know, and most people that, that get bit by that bug don't ever shake it. Now, yeah, you know, there was people a, that, uh, I've talked to people that run 360 sprint cars and, and a few people and they get out of them and a couple of years later they're back and, uh, you just can't stay out of the seat of one. And, uh, it's killing me even now. I haven't raced in eight months, uh, maybe going on nine, but, uh, it's killing me not being in the seat and I couldn't imagine not racing sprint cars, That that would just be a, real foreign thing in my life so well when when, when you've had a, a life like 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 yours has uh or you've been racing for so long to to step away from it and be to have it taken away from you more than anything else um that that's that's got to be tough yeah there's uh there's no way i could uh not race and uh if if something happened uh everything was uh, gone tomorrow i'd i'd figure out uh you know i wouldn't be too worried about where to live i'd find a friend's couch or something but i'd be worried about getting another race car to get back in and get get rolling around some racetracks and uh you know it's a 1400 pound car with 900 horsepower and you can't beat the thrill and you, you can't beat the reward of winning at the end of the night um all the hard work and prep that goes into it you know i mean you know i'll spend uh six eight hours after a race day just washing uh making everything sure everything's clean uh some people can tell you they wash a race car in an hour and and uh, i like to take my time make sure everything's proper and uh, uh we don't have the best of the best equipment uh this year we really stepped it up and just shy of the best of best equipment but uh our stuff's probably one of the neater and the cleanest equipment out there well now the the you you mentioned something there about loving to race. So that leads me to my, my question that me and Chuck are going to be talking about here in just a little bit. Uh, Chuck Becker will be on here in just a little while. And him and I have, have been talking about this all week. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask you the question. Do you love to win more or hate to lose more? You know, I've been asked that before and I've thought long and hard about it. And, 
there's no reward like winning. So I would say I'd, I'd love to win more than I hate to lose because uh, second place is the first loser. Although second place could, you know, sometimes it could just be a hard fought battle that you lose and, um, or it can be an absolute heartbreaker like last night with CJ Larry and Silver Crown. You know, you lead every lap except the one that counts and uh, Carlos snuck around him. But, uh, there's I I love to win more because the reward is is all the sponsors that help you get get out there and uh, make you uh, you know make my uh, dream starting to come true trying to chase it uh, becoming a national sprint car driver you know there's uh, nothing more rewarding than a win for your sponsors uh, everyone who works on the car um, you know everyone as little as uh, my dad's best friend for probably 25 years now and. And uh, if I never, he's right up the street. Uh, we call him LV. His name's Levandis uh, Caldwell. But uh, if I ever need anything, I can call him, and he'd help me load a trailer if my dad was at work or whatnot. And uh, he'd do anything to be out here. And it's the people like that, and my grandma and grandpa, and like I said, Toby Sampson and Jim Blakesley. You know, to to get a win. Uh, unfortunately, haven't done it in the 410 yet, but uh, to get a win for all those guys would be amazing and uh, not only for all those guys but for all the time and work i put into the race car and uh, i'd do it anyway but uh anyone could lose so i think the winning is more important and uh more rewarding than a uh, loss for sure good answer now here here's a big question do you remember the first time someone asked you for your autograph well you know, I can't say I do, and it's probably not a good thing that I don't know. Um, I think I signed probably my first autograph when I was racing the Ron Blondell's All-American Motorsports Foundation Ford Focus in 2015 at Ventura. That uh, probably would have been my uh, first autograph for sure. And I've had some exciting ones, like signing uh, kids walk up and want their shirt signed, their pants signed, their hat signed. Uh, one little girl walks up. At the last Paris we raced uh, before Oval Nationals and uh, wanted her forehead signed. And I looked up at her mom and, and uh, her mom said it's okay. And I was like, great. You know, it's it's good to see people that into racing that, uh, you know, and the little kids coming into racing because uh, that's where they all start. And, and, you know, you hope more people want to race so we can grow this sport even bigger. That, now that, that That's about the most unusual autograph I've ever seen, a forehead. Yeah, it was definitely a bit odd, but uh, like I said, I looked up at her mom, and she said, it's all right, and I said, okay, that's fine with me, and uh, you know, like I said, it's it's cool to see little kids into it. Um, I say little kids, I'm only 17, but uh, you know, uh, kids that were my age when I started racing quarter minutes, and it's uh, it's great to see for sure. Well, now, now, Joel, I want you tomorrow, I want you to work on something for me. You got okay. you, you got to quit saying I'm only seventeen, because after after Wednesday, I'm eighteen. You got to yeah, add I'm that other year to... in there. Yep. Yeah. I. I uh, yeah. I keep forgetting about that. I. Uh, I'm the worst when we change years. Uh, I'll put the previous year for at least a month or two. It takes me a little while to to uh, get into rhythm <laughs> with the beginning of a new year. I, I I have to write the date 25 or 30 times a day. And the first month of the year, I keep a big post-it note on the dash of my truck so that I remember what year yeah. it is. Because if I don't, I'll never, I have to write it up there all the time. But yeah, I, I, I know, I feel your pain on that one. But now I know yeah. you can't, you can't do all this together. And I know you've mentioned your car owner's. And, and a lot of your sponsors, but who do you have that, that helps you on the car day in and day out and is always there for you? Uh, you know, I do most of the work on the car, uh, usually myself because my dad's at work. Um, but if I ever uh, need help uh, before race week or anything, it's it's my dad and I. Um, and like I said, uh, LV, you know, he'll, he's right up the street and uh, he'd drive home from work if I needed help. Uh, loading a race car like i said if my dad's work he's done it before he'll do it again and uh it's great to have people like that but uh mainly i build the cars and maintenance them uh you know my dad 
my dad does a few things if I need them, and uh, usually I have them done before he's home from work and and whatnot anyway. So uh, it ain't bad, and uh, it's fun to do. But, uh, you know, great sponsors keep me going. Like DJ Safety has been supplying me safety equipment for 11 years now, I believe going on 12 into this season, uh, if we can ever get a race in. But uh, Justice Brothers, I picked up when I ran a Ford Focus midget, and that was an honor to carry a a name like that uh, as a fuel sponsorship. Uh, You know, Ed Ed Justice himself, uh, I never got to meet, but I met Ed Justice Jr. at the banquet when I won the Rookie of the Year in the 2014 season of the Ford Focus midgets. And uh, R.O.W. Signs and Graphics, so DRC chassis and Canon filters uh, have a partnership with them. And, and to carry something like that is truly, truly an amazing thing to carry a big company like that. And I uh, haven't put the faith in you to be able to, you know, sponsor you, have a partnership with you. And, uh, you know, they trust you with their name. And uh, that's pretty cool for sure, um, you know, being a, doing what I'm doing right now. Do you find that as, as, a, as a challenge? I mean to 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 take a name like K N N or Justice Brothers and to to carry that name and carry it proudly. Do you do you take that as 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 a challenge each and every week you go out? I don't take it as a challenge. I uh, I take it as an honor to carry a name like that, and I do my best. And um, you know, it's it, I try to do my best to promote the sponsors and and you know, help them get, uh, get a little, uh, kickback and, uh, an ROI on their sponsorship. And, you know, I do my best to promote them and myself hoping to create a big partnership one day. Um, but names like those, you know, you, you do your best and, uh, to promote them. And, and, uh, I think I do a, a pretty good job at it, uh, making sure there's name is out there. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's an honor to carry them, uh, more than a, uh, more than a challenge. All right. Now, now, you know, if, if people wanted to follow you and follow your racing and, and, and what you're doing and where you're going and where they may see you, how can they follow you on social media? Uh, well, Facebook, you can follow uh, my racing page, Joel Rayborn racing, uh, Rayborn is R A Y B O R N E. Uh, you can go to Joel Rayborn on Instagram and Joel Rayborn on Twitter and also take a, visit to our website uh it's recently updated and uh, i got a few more things up there and uh building a building a really great uh website platform there to uh help promote sprint car racing and promote my racing for sure and that's joelrayborn.com and once again rayborn is r-a-y-b-o-r-n-e and uh go check it out uh go like all the pages and and look forward to uh send a message if you want an autograph card and or send a message if you want to chat about racing uh anything works for me well, you know, I, th- I think that you have presented yourself in a very, very professional manner. I had uh, Shelly Woolridge turned me on to you and said, you need to get this young man on your show. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to call her and thank her uh, for, for putting me together with you. And, and man, I'm looking forward to uh, following you the rest of the season. And, man, I, I hope that you guys get to go racing soon. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, and I, I'm sure that win's going to come pretty soon in the 410. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, you know, I, I hope to find some sponsors get out to Indiana and run some local shows and, and uh, <laughs> get good with those guys and, and start running the national tour would would be amazing. And uh, like I said, a dream come true. That, that's what I'm chasing to become a national sprint car driver. And uh, so I appreciate your time and uh, giving me this – lot to promote my racing the sprint car racing and and chat about racing i love uh talking to you and uh maybe we could talk again real soon man i'm looking forward to it i want you to remember two things <clears throat> one and always keep this in mind from an old man to a young up-and-coming star just keep this in mind the only person that's holding you back is yourself you keep doing what you're doing Joel, because you are on the right track. And it, it's not going to be long that we're going to be seeing your name up there at the top of the charts and just about everything that you compete in. Uh, I got I got faith in you, buddy. Good luck to you. And uh, 
we'll, we'll stay in touch and we'll get you back on again real soon. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I've always remembered that and, uh, people remind me all the time. The only person holding you back is yourself. Uh, so, you know, uh, people say the sky is the limit, but, uh, I think there's no limit for as far out as you can reach. And, uh, you know, you do your best and, and, uh, you know, all these great people have put me on this, is this proper track. And, uh, and I hope to continue it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's doing good for the names and the people and the sponsors who have helped me, uh, throughout the year, put me on this track. Um, I'm going to carry that out, uh, strong and as long as I can and do the best I can, uh, for those people for sure. And, uh, as long as just the thrill of winning a sprint car race and being successful in the sprint car, they're not easy to drive, but sure are a blast. There you go, young man. Good luck to you, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Joel Rayburn, everybody. Man, follow him on Instagram, Twitter, and I'll get all his links posted up on our show page here in just a little bit so that you can follow along. We're going to step out, take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to shift gears, and we're going to do it a different way. It's the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor, and you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Hey, this is PMN's Bob Steele, and if you're planning on attending the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour event at the end of the month at Pit Race, then you're going to need a place to stay. Now, if you're looking for a motel close to the track, I'd highly recommend PMN's official motel partner, the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Enjoy their free continental breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and on-site fitness center. Plus, their spacious suites offer the added comfort of a sitting area for those last-minute team strategy meetings. For reservations, you can click on the link on the PMN website, call them at 724-581-5273, or book them directly through the WyndhamHotels.com website. That's the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, 724-581-5273. Featuring special discounted rates for race-bound SCCA members. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444, Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. It's the Mitch Walker Show. All racing and none of the BS. Now here is Mitch, the Dr. Walker. All right, welcome back. You know, talking with young Joel Rayburn, it really, I don't know what you got. It really makes you think back to years ago when when I first got into racing, the, the passion, that burning desire to do better. You know, to always be be willing to do what it takes to move to the next level. And I think I think Joel Rayburn's got that. And from talking to him on the phone uh, a couple of times and then having him on the show, I think uh, I think that young man is going to be wide open and ready to go. And he just got to got to land in that perfect combination, that perfect seat. And I believe I believe he'll have places to go. And it's nothing but up. But now. Shifting gears from sprint cars and a young gun to dirt late models and some old guns. Now, when I say old, let me let me preface that with they're not real old. Uh, Ronnie Johnson, the Chattanooga Flash. It was it was always fun calling a race with him because you mentioned RJ, the Chattanooga Flash always rolls in late unloads, never practices, goes out, he'll set fast time and then go on and win the race. 
I can't tell you the number of times I've seen him do that and call the race that he done it in. But he went down to Fort Payne this past weekend and won down at Fort Payne. Now, speaking of another one that's getting on up there, Ray Cook, the Tar Heel Tiger, uh, many time what used to be to have a Tampa Series winner. Uh, he won at Dixie in his capital car this past weekend. Uh, Dale McDowell, Mac Daddy, he wins at Smoky Mountain. Uh, Randy Weaver, the Dream Weaver, he won at Crossville. Skip Art, the skipper, this man has been racing since, well, uh, right after they invented dirt. And Skip Art had stepped out. He retired a uh, year before last, said he was done. They talked him into coming back and running with the uh, the Outlaw Topless Series, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool group. My buddy Brandon uh, Godsey's the announcer for them. Uh, he come back, gets in the car, and goes out and wins. Skip Arp wins. Uh, Brandon Williams in his capital car, he won this past weekend. So you look at a lot of these young guns are coming up, but don't count out these old guys. A lot of these guys can still get it done. I'm not saying Dell McDowell's old, but you know, you look at all those guys that are, that I listed, Ray Cook, Ronnie Johnson, Dell McDowell, Randy Weaver, Skip Art, and Brandon Williams. All of them have got, well, Brandon don't. He does have some, but he don't have as much as the rest of them. All of them have got as much gray hair as I do. And my, well, mine's not gray, mine's chrome. But there is uh, seeing these these guys that can still get it done. Ronnie Johnson is 67 years old. And he shows up. This man has probably forgot more about dirt racing than most guys will ever know. And to to watch him in action at a racetrack is is just it's mystical. The man will go find the quietest spot that he can sit, and he will sit there and he'll watch the racetrack. He watches how the track changes from heat race to heat race to heat race, and then he goes back. He'll make changes on his car. He comes back out, and he can come from deep in the field to the top, and he does it driving smooth and driving consistent. Ray Cook takes his capital car down at Dixie the other night and just put a butt whooping on him. Uh, RJ, I mean, uh, Dale McDowell up at Smoky Mountain this past weekend in the Ironman series, he started seventh and come back and he's battling with uh, Donald McIntosh for the win, finally gets around McIntosh and just drove off and left him. Randy Weaver, Weaver, who took a wild ride here a couple of years ago and backed his race car off the racetrack. I want to say it was at Fort Payne, but I, I don't want to, I'm not sure where it was at, but he backed his race car into the wall and had some, um, a minor concussion and he had some issues with that, some vertigo. And he just, he didn't want to race anymore. He just said he didn't feel like doing it. And so he was building cars, putting cars together, getting cars ready for his son. And then uh, last year, somebody said, here, jump in this car and run it. And he went out and he's run a few races. He's slowly coming back. But Skip Art, you know, he's been out of a race car for two years. And he said the other night uh, that the, the difference between the cars two years ago and the cars today he said the setup is just night and day difference. He said the cars still go fast. They still handle good. But the things that it takes to make that car do that, he said it, it's, excuse me, it's kind of a learning curve. But he said he's, he's working on it. So, you know, these guys, these guys are putting, putting programs together out there and getting out there and racing and doing what many of us, give up on years ago i mean i i realized early on that i was a whole lot better crew chief than i was a driver and that's what i focus my attention on 
these guys have been doing this for so long that their experience steps in when a lot of these other guys are standing around scratching their head going, what the hell am I going to do now? What do I, what changes do I need to make? You got guys like RJ and uh, McDowell and Weaver and Ray Cook. They have been there. They have done this. They have worked under pressure of the big traveling series. And they know the setup is totally different. But the pressure is still the same. The pressure to strive, to do better, to, to get faster, and to watch these guys get in there and do it each and every time that they crawl in a race car is, is phenomenal. You know, I mean, you watch guys like Ray Cook. When I talk to Ray Cook, it's always I always think of the old saying, one of the presidents, I believe it was Roosevelt, said, walk softly and carry a big stick. That describes Ray Cook to me because Ray Cook is soft-spoken. He's quiet. But when he talks, people listen, you know, like E.F. Hutton. Um, Ronnie Johnson is the same way. And you look at these guys and skip Arp. You know, Arp is is just the greatest guy you could ever meet. He he will give you an interview as he's getting in the car to go out for the feature because he's been doing it for so long. He knows his stuff is right. <clears throat> and to see these guys go out and battle some of these young guns, it's just it's amazing watching the effort that they put in and the results that they get in return. The, 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 the skill these guys show like Dale McDowell, the other night coming from seventh place, he was up to third in two laps. And I mean, that's not, that's not something you can teach the skill to, to jump four spots in two laps is not something you can teach. That is skill that, that has to be acquired. That's an instinct that you have to be born with. Some people, they can do it and get out there and, and, and drive race cars. Some people are, are doctors, you know, like an emergency room doctor. They come in, they think quick, they think on their feet. Some people, you know, they drive a truck. That's what they do. And they put on a show for themselves driving down the highway. Everybody has their own little niche in life. And these guys, some of these young guns, you, you can always tell the young guns that are going to go far because they sit back and they watch the veterans. I'm sure Joel, you know, I talked to him on the phone. And he said that, that, you know, he puts great stock in a lot of the things that Jimmy Oski has told him. And he's talked with Oski a lot. Oski is probably one of the best sprint car drivers that ever lived. He run on a regional level because he didn't have the money to go to the national level. And he was happy doing that. You know, some people can do that. Some people can't. But to, to see these young guns come up and admire or admire is not the right word, but to, to watch these veterans and see how they deal with situations and then model them and do what they do and follow them and learn from them. That's what makes the stars of tomorrow. You know, I sit up at, the, at, at Brainerd Motorsports Park this weekend watching some of these, these junior dragsters, you know, some of these kids have been racing seven or eight years and they are just deadly on the tree and they mile an hour at the other end. They, they go like a big dog. And then I watch some of them that are just getting started and the promoters work these kids in during the night when they've got a lull in the action in between rounds, they'll let the juniors go out there and make a run. There was a young lady um, I think she was six years old. I, I may be wrong, but she made a couple of runs the other night that just, it was, it was like watching paint dry. 
bless her heart, it took her like 17 seconds to get to the other end. But she was doing it the right way, one step at a time. The second time she went down, she'd done it in 15 seconds. Then the next time she went down, she cut it to 14. Slowly working her way up, getting her feet wet, and getting into the into the the groove of it, I guess you could say. And watching these young people do that, man, that that's impressive. And it's so uh, it's so cool to see these young people, the future of the sport, mature and grow right before your very eyes. And and to see them do that, man, it's just I don't know. I guess for for an old guy like me. It's really special. And to watch some of the, the, the older guys stand around at the drag strip and watch these junior dragsters go down the track and watch them and see the sparkle in their eye. And, you know, there's, there's, I'll be talking about some more of those here in a little bit, but it's, uh, it's just pretty cool to see the way some of these guys do that and, and look up to the, to the seniors of the league and learn from them. So it's, it's refreshing. And I, I, I find it interesting. And if you get to a racetrack, watch out for the old guys, because just because they got snow on the rooftop, don't mean there ain't a fire in the furnace. And uh, a lot of these guys can still get it done. You don't believe it. Just look at Ronnie Johnson or Ray cook or Randy Weaver or Dale McDowell, uh, skip art because this past weekend, it was the senior league that was dominant everywhere. And that's, that's what racing's all about is you never know who's going to come out on top. So good luck to them. And I hope they get the best luck moving forward. All right. We're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be shifting gears again. So don't go nowhere. I want to thank you for tuning in, but it's the Mitch Walker show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor. And you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Motorsports sales professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. Hey, this is PMN's Bob Steele. And if you're planning on attending the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour event at the end of the month at Pit Race, then you're going to need a place to stay. Now, if you're looking for a motel close to the track, I'd highly recommend PMN's official motel partner, the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Enjoy their free continental breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and on-site fitness center. Plus, their spacious suites offer the added comfort of a sitting area for those last-minute team strategy meetings. For reservations, you can click on the link on the PMN website, call them at 724 724- 581-5273 or book them directly through the WyndhamHotels.com website. That's the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls. 724-581-5273 featuring special discounted rates for race-bound SCCA members. We are the Performance Motorsports Network and incredible sales opportunities exist. If you have a business in the motorsports industry, give our sales department a call, 717-749-0444, or send us an email. We'll have an account representative get in touch with you immediately to show how we can market your business to the motorsports community. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, 
BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. It's the Mitch Walker Show. All racing and none of the BS. Now here is Mitch, the Dr. Walker. All right, welcome back. Sitting in with me tonight, I, I guess... I guess it's something about the left coast because joining me tonight in the second part of the show, my buddy from the left coast, Mr. Chuck Becker. Chuck, how we doing tonight, buddy? We're doing really well tonight. A whole lot better than some parts of the country. How about yourself? Oh man, uh, other than, than than going through a long weekend at the drag strip, I'm uh, I'm good. I'm just I'm I'm proud to be above ground. Well, good, good. Now we What's we going on? this. This topic came up the other night on social media, and we decided that that you said this is a this is a good question for a segment on the show. So I got to thinking about it, and the more I thought about it, the more I agreed with you. And it's sometimes it's really scary how much we think alike. <laughs> you ever notice that? We're 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 twisted like a slinky. <laughs> That's right. Boy, you got that right. But here's the ultimate question. And we are going to run a poll on this. So I will be putting this up on the, on our Facebook page for the Mitch Walker Show. I want you to go and put your two cents worth in on the, the poll that Chuck and I are getting ready to discuss. And here's the question. Do you love to win more than you hate to lose? Which which is it? Do you love to win more than you hate to lose? Chuck, what's your answer? I absolutely 100% hate to lose more than I love to win because when you win, you're good with it. It's okay. You're number one for the night. But when you lose and you hate to lose, you cannot wait to get back, to go back at it, to get rid of whatever happened to that, that, that went down, that you got beat. And when you truly, truly want, want it, you cannot stand to lose. I hate to lose. I hate to lose. I hate to lose. Winning is nice, and winning happens sometimes. And when you've done your job right, you win. The next day, you're back to zero. But when you lose, you have got to get back. You know, I thought the exact same thing because my, <laughs> my, my reasoning behind that was, was, was this, you know, when you win, you know, you're hero for the night, but come Sunday morning, you're right back to zero. But when you lose, Correct. you're a zero for the night and you carry that all week long. It's like a, if like a a worm eating at you all week long. You know, I want to get back. I shouldn't have tried to hit him on the high side. They're coming off a four. I should have went down in the bottom and you rethink everything you do. And you go to second guessing yourself, not so much second guessing yourself, but you, you go back and you look at different ways where you could have changed the outcome of that night. And so I, I have to agree with you. I mean, I know we had Joel Rayburn on just a few minutes ago, and he said he loved to win more than anything. Now, he did have a logical – he said because he loved to win because it was so good for his sponsors, and it, it, it put him in a positive mood. But then again, from the old point point of view, from me and you, I think that that, that burning desire – of hating to lose fuels that drive to win. Mitch, I have a sponsor 
that owns a carpet business. He's a carpet guy. He played professional baseball in his life for the Philadelphia Phillies, the Kansas City Royals. I've known him since I was nine years old. Great friend of mine. He sponsors my race car and has since since the beginning. And one of the things that he has stuck with me the entire time for is because I hate to lose. And that is that that is the God's honest truth. We have had that conversation. Well, you do know that I'm from the carpet capital of the world. What's that? I said, you know that I'm from the carpet capital of the world. Right. All that carpet that your buddy sells is made right here in Dalton. Nice, nice. (laughs) Next Next time you see him, mention Dalton, Georgia to him and see what he does. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I will. I will. Do you remember a uh, catcher for the Phillies that would, by the name of Dalton, clear back in the early nineties? No, he, not off I, the top I of think my he's head. deceased now. I God, I gotta, I gotta look up his last name. Um, damn it! But that was his best friend. But anyway, my buddy's name is Jeff Grotewald, and he has, he, 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 we love each other. But the fact that. I hate to lose is, is the same way that most people that I know, especially professional athletes, look at it. You're supposed to win. That's in your DNA. You're always, you always look at it like I'm going to the racetrack. I'm going to win. I'm going to play baseball because I'm planning on winning. I'm going to the basketball game because I plan on winning. But when you lose, you haven't done your job. So you hate it, and it will drive you crazy until you can get back in and redeem yourself. You know – I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I, I really do. But now, when I was thinking about this question riding down the road today, um, one of the things that came to mind was we have some guys in this area who who love to race. And they, 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 they put everything they have into racing. Uh, their passion is to go racing. I'm not knocking them. And and two guys that come to mind are Donnie Patterson and Donnie Van Winkle. Both of these guys are, are avid racers and probably two of the nicest guys you could ever meet. They are the picture of sportsmanship. When, when you look up sportsmanship in the dictionary, it has both of them's picture there because they're right. They're the kind of guy that if they spin out with somebody else, they'll hold their hand up and go, that was my bad. I'm sorry. You know, but they don't, they don't have that burning desire to win. Like some people do. They are just happy getting out there on the weekends, meeting with all their buddies. They, they go out and race. I mean, they race hard, but they don't put the, they don't put the value that some of us do on winning. They put the value on competing. And, you know, I got to thinking about that. And it's like, I thought, well, how could they do that? When, you know, this is a race. You're supposed to win. (coughs) They do want to win. But they're also realists. And they know that they may not have the best equipment money can buy. But they're out there doing what they do they love to participate they'll help anybody in the pits that they can and if they get a win they're just tickled absolutely to death but both of those guys i have seen both those guys take home the sportsmanship the sportsman of the year award and you know it's just kind of a different way of looking at it and while me and you you know we look at it we both hate to lose joel uh rayburn who was just on he loves to win. So, you know, it, it's interesting that, that there's so many different takes to the same question. And yet, you know, you can kind of see the logic in all of them. You, you can, and there's really not a wrong answer. It's just a matter of what, what, your, what your, your desire is. We all have the desire to win, or we shouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, but, but the one okay let me go to it let me look at it another direction here 
You know how when you see a car show up for the first time or, or a driver and say the, the lead pack, the, the top three or four cars are running, say, a 17-second lap, and this guy shows up and he's running an 18-second lap. Okay, it's going to take him a couple races, and pretty soon he's going to be, he'll knock a half a second off that, and he'll be doing a 1750. Then he's going to run a half a season, and he'll be down to, say, a 1720. And then the leaders are still running 17 second laps. By the end of the season, he's running a 1710. The difference between him being a winner and those guys that are beating him by a tenth of a second is how, is how bad does he hate to lose to me. And yep. that, that last tenth of a second is the hardest tenth of a second in any racing that there is, period. Well, you know, I seen something, <clears throat> I seen something Saturday night <clears throat> that I, I, I stood there and watched it happen. And I was really surprised. I'm not going to mention names, but this one little girl I hope to have on my show real soon. These these two junior dragster drivers, you know, junior dragsters are, are the youngsters at the drag strip. They run the little right. rails with the Briggs and Stratton motors on them. Uh, right. These things flat. Get it. Okay. Don't don't let nobody fool you. But this girl, one girl was just starting out. It was her second time at the racetrack. And she, I think her first run was like a 17 second ET. And her second run, she shaved it off to a 15, you know, and she's working it down. This other little girl who's 11 years old walked over, didn't know this other girl from, from nobody. She walked over. She put her arm around her and she said, don't get discouraged. She said, because it takes time to learn to work the tree. She said, once you learn to work the tree, the ETs will come. You'll start shaving those, those lap times down, those, those past times down. She said, you'll start shaving them down. You'll get them down. She said, just learn to work the tree. And I'm thinking, you know, here's an 11 year old giving a seven year old advice. Right. And giving advice that an adult would give. And I thought, you know, somewhere somebody told that little girl, that 11 year old, don't sweat the other end, just work the tree. And that and stuck with her. And it worked for her, so she was passing that same bit of valuable information along to the next generation of driver coming along. And right. I thought, you know, you know Mitch, that right there is just cool as frost. Through through my entire career, I've always tried to be helpful to other to other racers if they ask for it. I don't ever usually go to them, but if they ask for it, I will give them one hundred percent an honest answer almost to the point where it's ridiculous that they don't believe me. And I will tell them, you know what, even like tire pressures here, I'll tell you what you come over and you set the tire pressures to exactly what I've got them with my gauge on the, on the tape, on the fender, you do it that way. You don't think that I'm adding two pounds or lessening two pounds or whatever it is. The case is, and I'll go out on the track and I will run the car. Then you can see that I'm not BSing you. I'm giving you the exact. And then, Eventually, when they find out you're not BSing them, they say, well, why do you want to help me? Well, because when I beat you, I want to beat you at your best. I yeah. don't want to beat you because of having any excuses or, or having you not know something or, or any of that. And the other thing that happens on a racetrack is if their car is working well, they're that much less likely to be in a wreck. And the less wrecks, the better racing there is. That's yeah. just how I've always looked at it, and I've always wanted to beat them just on talent, heads up. Well, you know, that same thing in our in our development driver class that we had at Boyd's the past three years, I was surprised how many of the regular drivers that, that race week in, week out would come along to some of the younger drivers that were just getting into a big car, and they would walk up and talk to them. And, you know, they'd walk up, hey, how you doing? Just kind of shooting the breeze. And in a few minutes, you would see the hand motions come out. And you would see them talking about getting through the corner and making the car work down in the bottom. 
and it was like, you know, it, it's cool to see that information that these guys have worked so hard to, to learn be passed on to somebody else. And I asked, I asked Brian Pritchard, the guy that drives the big red machine, number three. I asked him one time, I said, man, why are you taking that youngster under your wing? And he looked at me and he kind of grinned. He said, Doc, it's like this. He said, if, if I just stand and watch him go out there and, and beat himself in the head, lap after lap after lap, he said, when I come up on him, he said, I have no idea where he's going to go. I have no right. idea what he's going to do. He said, but if I give him guidance and coaching and I kind of guide him along, he said, then when I come up on him, I know what he's going to do because I know what his mindset is. He said, I know what he's going to do. So I set my, my watch according to that. Right. And I thought, you know, that, that other, that's pretty smart. The other thing that happens that a lot of racers don't do is, is after they go have their practice set or whatever, they sit and they talk with, a, you know, they sit and they talk with their crew and they do other stuff. Me, myself, I get back up to where I can watch the other cars on the track because I want to see what the track's doing. I want to see what the other car is doing. I want to see where their strengths and their weaknesses are because I'm going to, at some point that night, I'm going to be coming up against them. And that's, I think that knowing the other drivers is, is about 60% of the battle. You know, one of these days, there, there's a few more that's going to have to pass away before I do it. But um, I've got some notes that I've had in a notebook for, well, let's just say a long time on different drivers. And these notes were written after the race. And it would be, I would come in and I would grab my notebook. And while it was still fresh in my mind, I would write down car number so-and-so, so-and-so Joe Blow to Ragman driver. Took me high three times in turn three, trying to intimidate me. And I would make these notes. And some of them, when I go back and read them 20, 30 years later, I sit there and I laugh till I cry because they're so funny because of right. what I wrote. But I remember how that, I remember when I wrote those notes down and it's just, it, it's, it's really, it's entertaining to me to go back and read some of them. I really ought to write a book, but um, I, I'm, I may do that, but you know, it's, it's one of those things I might not too, but tell you what, sit tight, Chuck, we're up against the break. We're going to step out. When we come back, I do want to talk about that and talk about how other drivers influence what you do or how you deal with other drivers that you know are going to do this or going to do that. So sit tight. Don't go nowhere. It's the Mitch Walker show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. I'm a very special guest and good friend, Mr. Chuck Becker sitting in with me tonight. And you'll find us exclusively right here on the performance motorsports network. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. Hey, this is PMN's Bob Steele, and if you're planning on attending the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour event at the end of the month at Pit Race, then you're going to need a place to stay. Now, if you're looking for a motel close to the track, 
I'd highly recommend PMN's official motel partner, the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Enjoy their free continental breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and on-site fitness center. Plus, their spacious suites offer the added comfort of a sitting area for those last-minute team strategy meetings. For reservations, you can click on the link on the PMN website, call them at 724-581-5273, or book them directly through the WyndhamHotels.com website. That's the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, 724-581-5273. Featuring special discounted rates for race-bound SCCA members. It's the Mitch Walker Show, proving there are shows about racing featuring more than just NASCAR. And here's your proof, Mitch the Dr. Walker. All right, welcome back. You know, Chuck and I have been been sitting here talking about different drivers and how some racers approach those drivers. I know know lots of people do it differently. Uh, I always kept really detailed notes and to go back and read some of those notes, even my setup notes from 20 or 30 years ago, I look and I read it. I put what spring in the front of this thing. Uh, but I, I get a big kick out of it going back and looking at old information. You ever do that, Chuck? Um, I, I, I really don't because I, I, I anymore, I race so many, my, when I do race, it's, the, the variables on tracks and, and even, even the divisions and stuff that I'm running, they very rarely coincide. Like if I'm in the modified one night, I might be on in an asphalt car the next in a super late or, you know, somewhere different. So I really don't go back and look at too much of it. And, and the times have just changed. You know, I mean, with, with the bump stops and stuff like that, times have just changed. So I really the only things that I ever actually look up are characteristics of a racetrack with, with the temperatures in the air, like what months that different tracks change according to that. That's about it. Interesting. I know, I know I have a, I have the, I can tell you what the setup was for 1994 at North Georgia Speedway in July. Nice. I, I mean, I can tell you what springs we had in the car. I can tell you how many rounds down we went on the front. Uh, I can tell you what my wheel weights were. Uh, I mean, I, my air pressures, if I had a wheel spacer or not. And and to go back and look at that from then to looking at them now, and it's like, man. Were we out in left field or what? Well, I can tell you this, Mitch. The more things change, the more that they revert back around to where they were years ago, and it's amazing how how smart the guys of the old the old days were. For instance, um, I learned to set a sway bar on asphalt when I was ten years old with a two by four. You know, you yep. put the left front up on a two by four without the driver in it. You set the sway bar. Off you go. Yep. And it, it, you know, just, but there's so much, so much more in the, in the category, you know, the category of parts that you can get now and that it just, the old notes just don't work because you, I mean, for God's sake, shocks can, you know, shocks make, make or break cars these days. So it kind of depends on which divisions and, and which times of the year. And then what I, what I do find myself doing, and I think it's hilarious because most of the guys in the modifieds or in the stock cars and stuff, don't do it anymore. But you see a lot of it with the sprint car guys and, and probably with the, with the, uh, the four bar cars, like, you know, with Bloomquist and them guys is at intermission out looking at the racetrack or, or digging down into the clay and looking for moisture and stuff. Yeah. But you don't see most of the guys these days doing that. They just, they don't even, they look at you and they're like, what are you doing? I even had a, a photographer out here, Bobby Kimbrough was taking pictures of me last year. And I, I walked back in after intermission. I said, what are you doing? He goes, you're the only guy here that's out there ch- looking at the racetrack and searching for where you're going to be. I want to catch a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and that's, that's one thing that, that uh, I learned watching Ronnie Johnson 
you know, the Chattanooga Flash. I mean, he was Bloomquist's teammate for a long time when they were at Barry Wright. They were the duo. Right. And to, to watch him, you know, that man, when we were running Boyd's, he would come by a couple of times during the week and ask, how much water have you put on the track? Have you put any more right. at the top than you did at the bottom? And I asked him how, one night, I said, much? man, is it really that important? Yes. And he looked at me and he grinned. He said, if you want to win, it is. The other, the other thing that's really important is when, when do the tracks add the chemicals? They, they put a, a certain type of soap in it. And when, when do they put that at what time of the year? Because the moisture stays longer through the course of the night. And most people don't even know that they put chemical in the water. Yep. So, Used to the only way we so, the only way we could tell if they put anything in the water was at the car wash on the way home. If the or if when you got there and they're watering it and it's foaming up. Yeah. I I, I watch them water the track. I actually will will get there early enough so I can watch that. Because I want to see how much. I want to see if, if they've rolled it before they put the water down. So if it's going to stay on top or get down in there, um, there's there's a lot of a lot of little things that that all add up to be big things. Like I said, it's that last tenth. Yep. And it, you know, it's it's amazing if somebody could take little tips and tidbits of information from a lot of the guys like you and 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 Ronnie Johnson and Skip Arp and these guys. And if they could take that that information and learn to apply it today, I mean, I know the setups, you know, the springs and the shocks and all that is different, but the actual mental preparation, the work that that goes into the race car, if if these guys could learn to put that to use, I think I right. think it would really improve a lot of the racing today. Well, you're always going to have those guys that leave their car on the trailer and tie it down and they've got the springs collapsed and everything. And the day before the race, they unload it to look at it like they're going to work on it or something. And then they get to the track and they, they're the first one to say how everybody else is cheating and they've got to, you know, they're <laughs> running old stuff to versus the new stuff. And they got every excuse in the book, but yet during the week while they're sitting at home watching their TV, all the other guys, they're out in the shop after they get off work and they're busting their butts on a car, they don't want to, but they also know that it's going to be, that that's the difference between getting beat or not. Yep. Well, you know, Booger Brooks, that, he comes on. that man, he, he wins everywhere he goes. And it's not he because he's got right. a faster car. It's not because uh, he's got more, more money in his race car. It's because the man works on his car all week long. There's there's and a couple things to he'll take, Brooks. He'll I don't, tell you first I don't thing even he said are one in the shop. Right. But Booger Brooks, I, I, I I'm friends with him on Facebook, but I don't know him. I've never met him. But I watch I watch what he's doing and stuff, and he he's very impressive. But I also know that he's there's a there's an it factor and there's some things that go with the it factor. And I can explain that. Booger Brooks is okay. very good with his feet. He is very yep. good with his footwork. We've talked about this before. Um, when Kyle Larson was getting beat by Christopher Bell, the one thing that they asked what the difference was, Kyle Larson said his footwork is better than mine right now. I know yep. for a fact Kyle Larson went back and was working, was practicing his footwork. After he got back out of the cup car, went to the sprint car, I know he's working his footwork because footwork is everything in a race car. And being able to, your your eyesight and your depth perception to see where you're at and exactly what you got to do with the car and be able to put it there. Oh yeah, and, and you know I have watched. I just can't tell you the number of times, and it it don't matter what class he's in. Booger Books can jump in a B hobby, an A hobby, a sportsman. Uh, I watched him run a super late model. The first time he ever drove a super late model, he drove Gar Dixon's Ford powered super late model at North Georgia. He set fast time. He started on the pole. He led 19 and a half laps of a 20 lap feature and bobbled getting into three and four 
and and run second to another guy who, who passed him in the middle of three and four. And when I talked to Booger after the race, I said, well, man, what happened? He just looked at me and he grinned. He said, brain fart. Yeah. He said, I've done it every time getting through three and four. He said, in that time, for some reason, I just, I didn't do it. He said, and, and I paid the price. He said, but that's okay. He said, I learned a lot. Right. But that's, that's, that's just the way. And, and Booger's like you. If you go to him and you say, hey, what do I need to do on this car? He'll tell you. He'll tell you. He said, hey, I'll give you the exact same things that I've got. I'll sell you the exact same shocks and springs. He said, if you want to buy them, I'll sell you the shocks and springs and tires and wheels out from under my car right now. He said, I got another set of right. at the shop. He said, if, that's what, if you think that's what's beating you at the racetrack, he said, I'll sell them to you. He said, but that's not what's beating you. And, you know, back, back, in the, back in the day when we were running leaf springs, we were running monoliths, and they are, they are real susceptible to losing their arch. And we, that car came in off the racetrack. It went up on jack stands. Absolutely. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't keeping no weight on those springs. When that car got home, it went up on jack stands. And people laughed at me, and they said, what are you doing? And then when they see me pull the leaf spring out and, and get my ball-peen hammer out, they really didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but we beat them on the weekends, you know? Right. But no, it's always, they, it's they, always, and, uh, I have found that, that, you know, the, the people who spend the time working on their cars, understanding what's going on, working, striving to be better. Uh, those are the people that you see starting to rise to the top. And, you know, I, I never really paid much attention to it until the past month or so when I've been going up to the drag strip. And I've been seeing it there, too. You know, I mean, these drag racers, they don't do a whole lot of chassis setup. You know, they, they play with air pressure a little bit. But as far as chassis setup, they're not doing a whole lot of it. Well, they should yet, be. When, when, when you see them watching the tree and watching how they leave, that, that's what gets me. It's like they are, they are so in tune. And one of the guys come up the tower the other night, and I was talking to him. And he says, you know, he says, the, the name of the game here, because he came from dirt racing. He said, the name of the game here, he said, this is like a 100-mile-an-hour chess match. He said, because it's not about beating the other guy. He said, you're just trying to make the very best pass that you could make. Right. And he said, that's, that's what it's all about. And watching these guys, I mean, it's just amazing. You, you just said something a second ago, Mitch, that I wanted to touch on. You said the dedication. Okay. Well, here's where the dedication comes from. And my original answer to the original question on the show you don't go out unless it's a phenom and win your first race. What you do go out and do is you go out and you get a taste of it and you get beat and you hate to lose. So you go work harder and you lose yep. again and you work harder and you lose again and you work harder. And pretty soon or well, at some point, if you put enough hours and enough dedication and enough hard work and enough patience and and enough common sense into it then you do get a win then you're like okay well that was cool right back to the drawing board but i i yeah. you never forget that feeling of losing so you don't want that feeling again yep yeah it, it but second place is first loser and that really sucks that's even more frustrating i'd rather get my ass kicked than finish second yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, because man, hey, we're we're getting up close, close to the, we're we're getting up close to the break. I'm gonna have to let you go. But what what do you got? You got any racing in your in your f near future? I do. I'm heading to uh, to Madeira the 28th and 29th this year on the asphalt and driving a uh, 
I forget what they're called. It's a, like the old uh, K&N West cars. Um, yeah. They're challenge, challenge cup cars, and I'm going to race that. We were just talking about it a little while ago, trying to get a seat that'll fit me from up there without me sitting in it. It's pretty pretty entertaining. So they're just going to bring a port of power and the biggest seat they got, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, real quick, I, I jumped in my boss's car one night, and he was about, oh, 260. And at that time, I was about 170. And I could slide back and forth sideways in his seat. And I'm thinking, this is not good. So everybody and their brother's bringing me foam, you know, trying to pack me in there. And I I went out and I run the race. I done fine. We done okay. I come back in. I went to get out. It looked like somebody's couch exploded. There was pieces (laughs) of foam everywhere. And I'm like, where the hell did right. all that come from? That, that's what was holding you in the seat. <laughs> but, yeah. It's- you know, Mitch, uh, there was an interesting thing that happened this past week with uh, at one of the races. I think it was Tyler Tyler Herb and was it Bobby Pierce? Yep. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of people saying how they should get, you know, thrown out for good and or find ungodly amounts of money or any of that stuff. I disagree. The only thing that they've got to do is they've got to keep people from coming in from the pits and being able to get in the window of somebody, somebody's car. And yep. the reason you got to stop that is because you can hurt somebody really bad by doing that either direction, but people are going to spin each other out here and there without it getting too carried away that, you know, I'm, I'm okay with some of that. I'm even okay with, you know, if a driver wants to get out and the other drivers gets out and they want to square up and they want to throw a punch, because really all it is is a punch or, or a pushing match and then a dog pile. Nothing ever really happens yeah. anyway. Yeah. So I'm okay with all that, but, but they can't just let rich kids keep destroying stuff because they can get away with it. That's where you yeah. got to put draw the line at. And that's, that's the topic of my soapbox, which is coming up in the next segment. Nice. <laughs> and see, you, you'll need you'll need to tune into this one because um, I, I I'm I'm doing it solo because I'm I'm getting ready to get way up on top of my soapbox, and okay. I don't want nobody else to be tied into my opinion. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, mine. I'm I'm okay with a punch or two here or there, but you can't let it get carried away. And you cannot yep. absolutely under any circumstances allow people to come from the pits to the racetrack to get after a driver for two reasons. One, because he can hurt a driver really bad inside a car by turning his head around yep. by getting a hold of his helmet. Or two, by getting the driver, if he sees him coming, could potentially run him over and kill him. Yep. Neither of those are acceptable. That's so. right. Well, Chuck, good luck in the challenge series. Uh, make sure you post some pictures. I will. I will. I will definitely, definitely be doing that. And I'll, I'll see if uh, my buddy Chris Brittle can maybe go live on Facebook for that. And we do have another round coming up here pretty soon in the, the, the driver poll from, from Paris for the modifieds. We're still alive and kicking in that. We're in the final four. We'll see how we sweet, do. Sweet. <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll get some we'll, more people we'll to vote for you. What's that? I said, we'll get more people to vote for you. All right. He sounds good, Mitch. And I appreciate being on the show. Hey, anytime, Chuck, man. I love it when you're on. Be good and uh, take care out there in the West Coast. All righty, sir. You have a good night and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Chuck Becker, ladies yeah, and bye. gentlemen, uh, racer extraordinaire and good friend. All right. We're going to step out and take a quick commercial break. It's been the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. Call me the doctor and you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Hey, this is PMN's Bob Steele, and if you're planning on attending the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour event at the end of the month at Pit Race, then you're going to need a place to stay. Now, if you're looking for a motel close to the track, I'd highly recommend PMN's official motel partner, the Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Enjoy their free continental breakfast, free Wi-Fi, and on-site fitness center. 
Plus, their spacious suites offer the added comfort of a sitting area for those last-minute team strategy meetings. For reservations, you can click on the link on the PMN website, call them at 724-581-5273, or book them directly through the WyndhamHotels.com website. That's the Mike Rattel Inn & Suites by Wyndham in Beaver Falls, 724-581-5273, featuring special discounted rates for race-bound SCCA members. Motorsports Sales Professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444, Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. It's the Mitch Walker Show. Great guests, great hosts, compelling topics, and the producer ain't so bad either. Now back to Mitch the Dr. Walker. All right. Now, before we jump dead into the soapbox, I do want to throw one thing out there. I just seen Indianapolis Speedrome, where the Tunny Boys run, figure eight racing, uh, there in Indianapolis, just got nailed for a $1,000 fine by the local county government for having more than 25% capacity in their grandstands because of the whole COVID-19 thing. Well, that sucks. That's a $1,000 fine for the racetrack, which most racetracks are operating on a budget anyway. But I have figured out the solution to the problem. Instead of having races at the racetrack, now we should just organize peaceful protests with race cars. No longer called a race. It's just a protest because they never say anything about the protest being more than 25% capacity. Just my thought for the day. All right. Now, this past weekend, Cedar Lake Speedway up in the Great White North, they were running a race. Bobby Pierce and Tyler Herb Turbo were in a, I guess you could say, a small confrontation. Bobby Pierce has a reputation of driving it like he stole it. I'm okay with that. It cuts across people's noses a time or two. I'm okay with that. But to do it constantly, that gets a little old. And then when somebody turns around and does you the same way and you decide you want to turn them and make it obvious that it was an intentional turn, 
There was no doubt in anybody's mind Bobby Pierce turned Tyler Irv. Turned him on purpose. So Tyler Irv decides he's going to retaliate. So he goes the opposite way down the back straight and meets Bobby Pierce coming off of turn two. They go nose to nose. Herb tries to drive up on top of Bobby Pierce's race car. Bob Pierce is in the infield. He comes running out, runs up, reaching in Tyler Herb's window. While Tyler Herb is trying to get his front end up on top of Bobby Pierce's front end. Wasn't doing much good, but here's my take on it. Tyler Herb was wrong. He should have never have used his car as a weapon to attack Bobby Pierce. Now, was Bobby Pierce right? No, he was not. There's enough blame here for everybody. Bob Pierce should have kept his happy ass in the pits where he belongs. Why would he be allowed to go out on a hot racetrack just to protect his son, as he put it? Well, thing is, you've got two race car drivers strapped in a cocoon between the body, the race car, the full containment seat, the helmet. The driver is strapped in, like Chuck Becker was saying. Reaching in and grabbing a driver, you can do some serious damage to the driver's neck. If you grab his helmet and pull it, you could seriously injure a driver. No, you're not going to hurt him beating on him. But if you grab his helmet and he tries to get away from you, the only option he's got is to drive away from you. And doing so, depending on how good a grip you have on his helmet, you can inflict some serious damage. Was Bobby Pierce right to turn Herb? Nope. Was Tyler Herb right to put another to return the favor and put a slide job on Bobby Pierce? Well, you know, that's under green flag. That's racing. The intentional turn in him, that's that's a chicken crap move to turn somebody like that. But if that's how they want to race, that's fine. But these touring series, the Lucas and the World of Outlaw, somewhere they have to draw a line. I know there's a lot of people on social media. Your Tyler Herb fans are defending Herb. Your Bobby Pierce fans are defending Bobby Pierce. Both of them are trying to present logical arguments. But the fact of the matter is this. Tyler Erb was wrong for what he'd done. Bob Pierce was wrong for what he'd done. If Bobby Pierce and Tyler Erb want to settle the difference, I don't know of a racetrack in the country that wouldn't throw a red flag, break out two pair of boxing gloves, put them at the start finish line and drop the green flag on a fisticuff. Let them go at it. Mono a mano man on man at the start finish line. If you want to fight, take it to the start finish line and go at it boys. But to use your car to try to damage the other car, I don't go for that. I damn sure don't go for that when, you, when you've got a stack of race cars sitting in your hauler and you can afford to tear them up. You know, there's guys back at the shop that has to bust their ass to put those cars together and to keep them together. And yeah, most of those guys, they believe in their drivers so much that they'll tell them, hey, go out there and just bring me the steering wheel back. I'll fix the rest of it. But that's blind loyalty. 
which is good. It's good to have a crew that's that way. But you've got to look at what the fans see, what the national media sees. Yes, it has been the rage of social media for the past 24, 36 hours. Somebody posted a picture of of Tyler Herb's car and said he would sell it. If there was a collector out there that wanted to buy it, say, hey, this is the car that Tyler Herb tried to drive up on top of Bobby Pierce. You know, there's so many different ways this could go. But as long as the sanctioning bodies allow this kind of action, this is the result you're going to get. And it's going to keep going, and it's going to escalate. It's going to snowball. Next time, the driver gets, the guy runs up and reaches in the car, it may be he may lose his arm. Somebody's going to get seriously hurt. There has to be a point to where you draw a line in the sand and you say enough is enough. Stop the nonsense. You guys are supposed to be professionals. You're supposed to be the best at what you do. And you're acting like a couple of fifth graders who got pissed off because somebody took their ball. (coughs) Some people think that Bobby Pierce is the, the golden boy with a golden horseshoe shoved up his butt because his dad is Bob Pierce. Well, you know, maybe that was true. Tyler Herb, he's, he, he's not maybe not on the same level, but you don't get to that level of competition racing on a, on a B-hobby budget. You've got to have money backing you. And to, to go out there and put that kind of a show on for the fans – Yeah, some fans are going to scream and holler and think, oh, that's the greatest thing in the world. That was super cool. That was sweet. Did you see him do that to Bobby Pierce? Your Tyler Herb fans think it was great. Your Bobby Pierce fans think that Herb should be suspended for life. I think the way to do it, park both of them for three weeks and park Bob Pierce in the grip in the grandstands for the rest of the season. He has no business running out on a racetrack and grabbing a driver. There's no reason for that. I know a lot of people may not agree with my opinion, and that's okay. That's why we all have opinions. But I don't look at it from a Tyler Herb fan or from a Bobby Pierce fan. I look at it from a fan of racing. I look at it from a promoter's viewpoint. I look at it from an announcer's viewpoint. Do you know how hard that is to announce something like that? Because you can't be biased about it, no matter whether you thought that was a chicken shit move or not, with him spinning him out, you have to call it neutral. There's no sense in putting that kind of display on social media because you know that's where it's going to wind up. There comes a time when a line has to be drawn and said, hey, look, from now on, you spin this guy out, you're going to the pit. You're going to sit in a hot pit for two laps. If you intentionally spin somebody out, you're going to the hot pit for two laps. Or maybe the next race. Hit them where it hurts. In the pocketbook. Don't find them. Park them. But actions have to be taken. Simple law of physics. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. If you want them to turn into a free-for-all, have a Donny Brook on the infield, then let it keep going like it is. Because that's what it's going to wind up leading to. And then somebody's going to get hurt. Or God forbid, somebody's going to get killed. Then all the bad press 
is going to fall down on dirt track racing. It's not, it's more than just Tyler Herb versus Bobby Pierce. It's way more than that. It's how the nation perceives dirt track racing. Dirt track racing has worked long and hard to shed that good old redneck boy image and to show that racers at the level that they are today are true professionals. And actions like this set that image back five years. We don't need that. We need to keep moving forward and moving forward with a positive light to promote good racing. Not stupid actions by one person that's pissed off. Jimmy Owen said it best. My anger usually lasts about a half a straightaway. That's what we need to do. We need to keep that anger a half a straightaway long. It's okay to get mad. But don't let it just keep festering. Don't let it keep building. Whether you're an Herb fan or a Pierce fan. If you're a true race fan, you can tell that that's not good for racing. And that's the kind of thing that we need less of in the world today. We don't need that kind of attitude in racing. All right, that's my soapbox for tonight. I realize some people, some people may, may agree with me, some people may not, but that's okay. That's the name of the game. It's all about keeping things in a positive light. Now, I said I was going to touch on the winners from Brainerd. I do want to do that. This past Saturday night, your winners on Sunday, Saturday night in Super Pro, it was Cody Hallowell in Junior Dragsters. It was Shelby Whittle in No Box. It was Melvin Croft with a Dodge Power Wagon. That's right, big four-wheel drive car. A Dodge Ram Charger, that's what it was. And in Sportsman, it was Brian Cronin. On Sunday, Sportsman, it was Brian Cronin. In No Box, it was Marty Goldsmith. In Junior Dragster, it was Shelby Whittle. In Supers, it was May Grayson. So, there's your winners. This weekend at Brainerd, it's going to be the 440 Bad Boys running on a 440 Index. These boys flat bring it. Down into the four seconds in an eighth mile. Going from a dead stop, going 660 feet, and be running 150 miles an hour at the other end. If you ain't never seen that, you need to come on out to Brainerd this weekend and check it out. The 100 mile an hour chess match. It's, it's different. If you're a dirt racing fan, you think, well, that's kind of boring. Yeah, it is until you start looking at it and seeing how much is involved in making that happen. It does get to be pretty exciting, and I think that more people need to at least try taking a look at it. You know, it don't matter what form of racing you follow. Motorsports is something that we all love. We all love going fast. We all love the competition. Dirt track racing has its fans. Drag racing has its fans. Hell, even bar stools go racing. Lawnmowers go racing. There's racing in just about every category that you can imagine. And it's all good. It's all motorsports. And it all keeps us entertained. So whatever form of motorsports you choose to follow whether it's drag racing, dirt racing, asphalt racing, like Chuck Becker's going to do the end of the month, the challenge series, go out and support your local motorsports events, whether it's at the drag strip, the dirt track, the go-kart track, wherever it's at. And the, the companies that, that support that local racing, support them. Because without them, 
that's all we've got. But thanks for tuning in tonight. I want to wish you each and all a safe week. Have a great time. Remember two things. Take somebody racing with you this weekend. And remember this. You can't change the whole world, but you can touch just one life. It's been the Mitch Walker Show with your host, me, Mitch Walker. They call me the doctor, and you'll find me exclusively right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Y'all ready for this? You've been listening to the Mitch Walker Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. The Mitch Walker Show is a copyrighted feature of the Performance Motorsports Network, a member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, and may not be saved, reproduced, replicated, podcast, duplicated, or rebroadcast on any media without the express written permission from the Performance Motorsports Network. The opinions expressed on this broadcast are those of the host, co-host, and guests, and do not necessarily necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of the Performance Motorsports Network, Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers or marketing partners. Go to the Performance Motorsports Network by clicking on the links available on www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com or on our Facebook page, facebook.com front slash Performance Motorsports Network. Download the PMN app for your smartphone or go to TuneIn, Google Play, or any of the other popular platforms, or you can go to the App Store and pick up the free app there. Be listening again next week for the latest motorsports news, in-depth coverage of the week's racing events, and compelling race talk. For the Mitch Walker Show, this is Big Mike.